Hi, I'm Tyler Colt from Zanata Consulting, and this product overview for Zoho Books was taken from our 2022 webinar. Uh, if you do find it useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. That really does help us out. And please make sure to leave any feedback or questions in the comment section as well. Uh, we read every single one. Thanks and enjoy. Alrighty, so straight to the good stuff here. Uh, we've got Zoho Books open in front of us. Um, <clears throat> as you'd expect, kind of the first page here is a top-down dashboard. Now, there's a lot more reporting that you might want to do with your data out of Zoho Books, but this is kind of just a way to get a you know high-level view of what's going on from an accounting basis. It's going to show your receivables, your payables, any of your cash in, and uh, kind of overall cash flow for given periods of time. Uh, top down on some expenses, um, you know, if you've got connected banks or connected credit cards, you can kind of see all that flow through here as well. Um, again, kind of moving the overview forward on the left hand side, these are going to be the main navigators that will help you kind of get around the application. You'll see that some of them are kind of expandable, right? So if we go down the list here, we can start with items. Um, Items, there are a few different types. Uh, if you want to sell a product or a service, they're both going to be uh, classified as items. Um, that can trip people up a little bit. So even a service is going to be a type of item that's sold. Um, if we take a quick peek into an item, you can track all the things that you would expect to. You, know, you can assign it a SKU, give it some dimensions if you want to run your packaging out of here associate it with a sales and a purchase account, kind of mapping it to your GL codes, which Brett will get into a little bit later. Um, define that initial sale price and cost price as well, so that when your team is working with this, it'll always have a default, which you can then always edit um, as needed. Um, different kind of type of item that you can look at within here that we're not going to go into in too much detail are um, different types of item groups. Um, so an item group would be something like, you know, you sell a t-shirt in a variety of sizes and colors. You might want to consider that t-shirt as a whole, an item with these different kind of variants or options within it. Um, you can also do composite items, um, which are used for if you're selling something that's kind of like a bundle, right? So in their little image here, they have, you know, if you sold a shirt, some shorts and a belt, right? And that was all going to be kind of sold as one item. Um, you can surely create a composite item off of that um, and then manage the inventory of that bundle kind of separately than the inventory of those components that go into it. Um, inventory adjustments here, a little specific if you have Zoho inventory plugged in. A lot of people do. Uh, this is basically just a way to adjust your stock on hand for specific items kind of on an as needed basis. Um, Banking, you know, you can connect in your external banks and credit cards directly into Zoho Books. Um, that will allow you to essentially pull in all of your transactions into a running feed. And then all you'll need to do is kind of categorize them against, uh, you know, invoices if they're a payment or expenses if it's something that's, uh, you know, a cash out from your accounting. Um, jumping into kind of the meat of things here, and we're going to go through these next two kind of quickly because we'll circle back around and go through them in more detail later. Um, but, you know, you're going to be doing a lot of selling and purchasing from within Zoho Books. So over here under the sales tab is where you'll find things like customers, right, where you'll have a variety of different companies and contact people at those companies with whom you do business. Um, a quick 30,000 foot view here, you know, you can create and send out estimates, which can be digitally accepted. Um, you can manage sales via sales orders, which kind of connect your estimate through to the future invoice that you're sending out, um, as well as to packages if you are going to be managing physical inventory and shipping from within Zoho Books and inventory as well. Packages, again, they are unique to uh, books when you have the inventory integration turned on. Um, but if you do have that activated, you can kind of track the full life cycle of a package here. Invoices, again, really important record. These are how you'll actually get paid. Um, these can be paid digitally via either you know, credit card or ACH um, directly through Zoho Books. They support a variety of different gateways that will allow you to do that natively. Um, all payments received are going to record themselves here as well under the sales section so that you could see, you know, maybe these 
two different payments were uh, applied to one invoice because you take a, you know, 50, 50 on a project or something like that. So like should create their own record for each payment that comes in. For those who do recurring billing, you can actually set up an invoice that will automatically send, you know, every month, every quarter, um, and basically hit that client account um, automatically for you. And then via sales returns and credit notes, you can kind of manage your refund and return process against those sales. Um, they kind of treat that as part of the sales process here within Zoho Books. Um, moving on to purchases, in the same way that you'll have a customer for a sale, of course, you're gonna have a vendor for a purchase. Um, vendors can be connected to a variety of different items that you buy from them. Um, that'll be useful when you're creating your purchase orders and doing any of your billing out to those vendors. Um, expenses, this is kind of an interesting one. You can track it natively within Zoho Books, just kind of have people log them and apply them into the system that way. Um, as you'll see with our little pop-up here, you can also use Zoho Expense if you have that included. Um, if you're on Zoho One or Finance Plus, that's gonna be part of your subscription. Um, if you have expense included, go ahead and use that. It's just a cleaner experience and all of the data is still gonna flow directly into Zoho Books uh, once those are submitted and approved. Um, recurring expenses, really it's just if you had something monthly and you wanted to just automatically create that expense every month, you can do that here. Purchase orders, again, kind of a workhorse record here in the purchases section. Um, so, you know, a purchase order, you're basically able to raise an order for a variety of different products against a particular vendor. Um, you can send that out from them. And then once you actually receive it from them, you can receive against that purchase order, which lets Zoho Books know that you have that in your physical inventory. Um, then you can convert it over here to a bill. So in the same way that you would invoice off of a sales order, you will create a bill off of a purchase order to basically mark that as paid or begin the process to pay for that sale or that purchase order. Um, again, kind of two sides of a coin, you'll have a list of your payments received over inside of sales, um, but inside the purchases section, you'll have a list of payments that you have made. Um, all of those payments are gonna be kind of connected up to a bill record so that you can know exactly what that payment was actually for. Um, last but not least here, if you do have a recurring bill that you wanted to send out, you know, maybe you have a you know, monthly purchase of inventory from a vendor, it's like clockwork, you know, you're gonna buy that every single month until you tell it not to, um, you can go ahead and create a recurring bill off of that so that you don't have to create it manually each individual month. And then if you do have any type of return out to a vendor, so maybe they send you product, 10% of it is broken, um, you can actually create a vendor credit to log that against that vendor so that you remember that, hey, you might actually be able to save some money on a future purchase order because you have some credits on file with that particular vendor. Uh, I'll touch on these next sections just quickly here. Um, you know, sales and purchases, again, are really your bread and butter here within Zoho Books. Um, if you do want to track time and kind of track that type of information in books, you can do that via the projects and timesheet settings. Um, in this case here, these are actually connected over to Zoho projects. You'll see this little check mark here indicates that you are actually having a project in a different application. Um, all of that data is still going to roll up here into Zoho books. Um, that can be really useful. So if you are someone who's doing implementation work, um, where you might need to, you know, roll up everybody's time on a project and invoice off of it, you know, if you're doing anything that's hourly or kind of get a nice export to run payroll in a third party system, um, you can use the projects and timesheets for that uh, pretty nicely here. Lastly, under the accountant section, you know, you could do a, a whole webinar just on the accounting functionality here within Zoho Books. We'll fly through this relatively quickly here. Um, as you'd expect, when you have your chart of accounts kind of lined up and set up, um, sometimes you have to make adjustments uh, via journal entries. So you can do that here within the accountant section. Um, so if you do need to make any adjustments after the fact, uh, you have that ability. These can be a one-time or a recurring journal. So if there's something that you're going to regularly have to do, um, you can just automate that by making it recurring. Um, using bulk updates here, so this is basically a way if you needed to significantly change 
right? Some data that was associated with invoices, purchase orders, really any of these big records. Um, you'll need to do that through a bulk update. Won't go down the rabbit hole here, but it's basically just some extra steps to make sure that everything in your accounting stays proper uh, when you are making a big bulk change to the data that you're feeding into the system. Um, here under our chart of accounts, Brett's going to cover this in more detail, but you'll have a variety of set kind of default accounts, as well as the ability to create some custom accounts within here. Um, budgets, you know, honestly, we don't find ourselves setting these up too much for our clients, but you can actually create a budget and track specific expenses against those budgets to make sure that you're kind of keeping within your expectations of cost. Um, we'll skip transaction locking here and jump into reports. Um, so under reports, they're going to give you a huge bank of kind of default reports that you can just pull from. Um, so of course, all your business overview, you know, your PL, cash flow statement, balance sheet, you know, you're going to need to have all of these. A couple of new things they added, a couple of those key performance ratios are going to calculate for you automatically here. Um, variety of different sales reports, you know, by customer, by item, by salesperson, as well as reports around your receivables, payments, so on and so forth. Um, any other reporting here that you might not have, you can either try to create it as just a basic kind of custom report or go ahead and bump it over to Zoho Analytics um, and do really anything that you could imagine with your data on that side of the house. Um, again, if you are on Zoho One, that's going to be included with your existing subscription. Lastly here, up in the top right, you do have your own little user icon. This will get you to your kind of account management page. You'll have a full kind of help window here. Um, the one thing I do want to highlight is the chat with experts. The Zoho Book support team is excellent. Uh, they are very responsive from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time. Highly recommend asking them any questions as well. Uh, it's a great team they have over there. Um, and here, you know, they'll kind of surface things like some of their tutorials, webinars that are coming up. I just like to highlight this because you can find some pretty useful information there. And then last but not least, we do have our settings cog that we'll kind of jump into in just a moment. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you did find it useful, please again, be sure to like and subscribe down below. Uh, that really helps us out and it'll make sure that uh, YouTube shows you our videos in the future when we put out more tutorials just like this one. Um, if you do have any questions or feedback, uh, make sure to leave those in the comments as well. We really do appreciate that. Helps us get better and better. And uh, after all that, we will uh, see you on our next tutorial video.